So, you have just finished Stranger of Paradise campaign and you're wondering what is Chaos Mode, or you're just interested in how is Endgame in Final Fantasy Origin. Well, I'm here to try and clear up everything on this topic and potentially help you understand and get ready to tackle everything in New Game Plus. If you're interested in more Final Fantasy content, also subscribe and check out the rest of my channel. Once you have beaten the main story, regardless of what difficulty you did it on, you will unlock a new difficulty mode called Chaos. Chaos mode is different than your usual New Game Plus mode in video games, as here, it's not your linear replay of the main story, but with stronger enemies, but instead, it's something of a sandbox mode, where you can decide what you want to unlock, and what missions and jobs you're interested in, and work your way up to unlocking everything for them. This is done by the introduction of a new currency called Anima Crystals. You're probably already familiar with its predecessor, the Anima Shards, that you gain through missions and defeating powerful monsters, that could be spent on job leveling screen to feed experience into leveling selected jobs. Anima Crystals can still be used to level up jobs as they give a lot of experience, but they have a more meaningful use, and it is to unlock missions in Chaos Mode. As mentioned earlier, New Game Plus over here is quite open, and progression ranges from item level 110 to 300, and each main and side mission on the world map also opens up several Chaos difficulties that you can select now all the way to level 300 versions for them all. These difficulties can range from every 5 to every 10 levels or so and cost Anima Crystals to unlock and be able to play on. This way you can choose which maps you would like to play on, whether you want to slowly play through several full playthroughs until level 300, or you would just like to instantly rush to level 300 on a single map and then tackle the rest of the game. It is up to you. On this note, I feel it's important to mention, since the lack of item level increasing and proper smithing system in the game, any item you acquire until Chaos 295 is technically going to be only temporary, and if you're really interested in making builds and sets, then this feature will really only open up at the very end of Chaos 300, so lots of people tend to just rush to the very end. This is usually done by joining a multiplayer session with someone who can clear level 300 missions to feed good items to you, which I have a detailed video about that also helps you farm for Anima Crystals. But it can also be done solo. Since once you have around 250 Anima Crystals, you can unlock any level 300 mission straight away without a problem. You can technically just unlock an easy mission, like Chaos Shrine, where you can, for example, feed fire bombs their fire spells and keep grinding them for the level 300 gear until you're able to finish maximum level missions. If you decide to unlock a level 300 mission straight away, in case you worry, you also unlock all previous levels before them and completing the highest difficulty rewards you with the completion rewards of all before. But be careful, if your average item level is 6 levels under the mission's level, and you see a red mark next to the mission, you get a massive penalty and you will receive at least 100% more break damage, and you will also deal way less break damage to enemies, and you will have to defeat them with plain health damage. But it is very doable, you will just have to play more careful. In the end, there is no best way to play the game, and you should choose for yourself how much you care about items and building your own sets fast. Or, instead, create your own several New Game Plus difficulties and go through the missions in order, slowly increasing the difficulty levels. I mentioned that these Chaos difficulties also have their own unique completion rewards, with some of them being items, more anima crystals, but the Chaos levels of main missions also reward job limit breaks. In Chaos Difficulty, all jobs will gain the ability to raise their maximum level all the way to level 99, through completing main missions that reward job limit breaks. These levels will be called Mastery Levels and unlock a new screen on your job skill tree where you can spend your mastery points on passive bonuses of your choice, massively increasing the effectiveness of the selective job. This is overall pretty straightforward and, well, seems quite simplistic and potentially even disheartening, these bonuses really add up and can spectacularly change the playstyle for your job, so unlocking jobs and adding mastery points actually feels quite rewarding. On top of this, mastery points can be reset and reallocated anytime for free, so don't be afraid of testing different passives. There is also a new addition to items in Chaos Mode in the form of a new rarity called Artifacts. Artifacts are a new rarity type that will drop quite frequently, so they're definitely not rare, but have the special bonus that they will always have two types of job affinities on them, making them far superior to any other rarity. The great thing about it is that they have also no cons or limitations because of this, 
and the affinities on these items can be just as good as previous ones, allowing you to create even better builds and even more job affinity sets for your characters. These affinities can also be further increased in endgame, with the addition of job crests. Job crests are also a new currency type that you will get from killing every third or fourth enemy based on what job you're playing as. These job crests will be used to increase the affinity on your items in the smithy by up to 15%, but at the cost of many, many crests, and this is possibly the biggest grind of the game. To unlock all additional features of your smithy, I recommend watching my side missions guide as completing these side missions will reward you with more smithing hammers. So here we have talked mission levels, anima crystals, mastery levels, artifacts, and job crests, but what exactly is Endgame about really? If you do decide to do it the hard way, it is the journey all the way from level 110 to 300. And if you decided to rush there or just arrive, then Chaos Level 300 is about completing all the same missions, farming for the right equipment, and have the right job affinities on them, and building your favorite jobs to perfection. There are no new missions, no new bosses, and you have to complete the same missions over and over again. But additionally, since they did not include any system to change your appearance, the ultimate endgame, as always, will be fashion, where you will attempt to find the right looking gear with the right rarity, the right level, and the right affinities to create the perfect character of your liking. And since items are all basically just RNG, except for a few, such as the Abyss gear, which missions you will find yourself doing more will depend on which item looks you prefer, as each mission will have its own loot table. Choose your missions based on the item sets you like looking at and start farming. Make no mistake, it is a grind, but since some of these builds are really intricate and fun to figure out, the game just massively changes on how it plays and flows, and turns the game from being bullied by everything into you bullying everything, and the combat just keeps being entertaining. If you're still unsure, maybe check out some of my Chaos builds and see for yourself. But that is Chaos Mode everyone, I personally think the difficulty could have been done way better. This ultimate freedom isn't really for me, plus by the time you're ready with making your builds, you don't really have anything else to challenge yourself with, so that's a bummer, well at least until the DLC. It would be nice to create a level 300 build and then have additional difficulty that's just for min-max characters, so you can actually be rewarded for making a strong character. I also would have loved a bit more freedom with item customization, be able to change looks, affinities, so there's less of a grind for them, especially given that unlocking all missions takes a lot of anima crystal grinding. Despite this, I actually find myself enjoying it quite a lot, and the reason for that is the combat alone. The intricacies and hidden mechanics you find after you unlock the best equipment, you're really able to create long-lasting item sets that show you just how stupidly awesome you can be in this game. And it is quite addicting, and makes me want to see more and more. So I can't wait for the DLCs at least. I hope this video helped clear up Endgame, and if you still have any questions, feel free to ask them here in the comments, or perhaps you will find answers in one of my other videos. Thank you for watching everyone, and I'll see you the next time.